Hello everybody, and welcome back to the Broadway Jets YouTube channel. You'll know me from Twitter as NYJ Mike. I'm joined as always by the master of receipts, NYJ Matt. And Matt, the 2024 New York Jets schedule has dropped. We're going to get into it. We're going to tell you why we think this is finally the year the Jets break out and make the playoffs. Come on, baby. Let's go. Yeah, we've been on a bit of a hiatus. We've had weddings. We have had bachelor parties. We are now finally back. If you are here, don't forget to hit subscribe. We are sponsored by Jet X Factor as well. Oh, yeah. Like, in about 30 minutes now, the official report will come out. But we know the Jets schedule. It has leaked. Shout out to Matt O'Leary. Dude, nailed Uh, it. The thing about Matt O'Leary, he's a good dude. And there's a million accounts that will pretend to have sources. And as soon as I saw his tweet last night, I'm like, he knows because there's no way he would he would toe that line and not know for sure. So good shout out to Matt O'Lear for dropping the schedule early. Great, you know, great Jet fan, great account. Yeah. And a big win. That was he was way before everybody else. Oh, he nailed it. Yeah, the our, our the Buffalo Jet fan had a great tweet yesterday. He's like, There's no way Matt O'Leary is gonna be schedule boy for the next four years. <laughs> great if, tweet. If this is wrong. Yeah, like if, there's no way. So I already started building my uh, my schedule meme post when I saw his his schedule come yeah. out. So I posted it today. So let's get into it. So Mike, I was very much under the position of any time, any team, any place, anywhere. Give right. me any team. I don't give a fuck. Our team is that good. Our quarterback is better than every other quarterback. Yep. That we play, and people might say Josh Allen who historically has been very bad against the Jets. Mike, I looked it up. 12 touchdowns, 11 picks for Josh Allen in his career against the Jets. You know he has 35 touchdowns and 9 picks against the Dolphins in his career? Dude, that's like 12 and 11. That's like Trent Dilfer numbers. And he started off with the horrific Jets. You know, the Jets defense has obviously been good the last couple years, but man, I would not expect that. So I, I was very much any team, any time, any place, feed me them. And probably in the back of my mind, I'm like, maybe we don't open on a primetime game in San Francisco, but that's <laughs> where we're opening, right? So we can go chapter verse. We can go each one. The main storyline, Mike, is six primetime and seven, if you count London, in the first 11 games of the year. When the schedule dropped, what was your initial reaction when you saw the cadence? It's crazy. Yeah, that is that is a crazy... <laughs> In terms of the Jets winning football games, first of all, the after the bye is is difficult. It is a difficult schedule. But to your point, I don't I don't care about that this year. For once, we're going to destroy people. Um, but yeah, if you go after the bye, you go Seattle. Uh, what is it? Seattle in Miami. In Miami, there's Buffalo in there. There's the Rams. There's the Bills Miami again. again. Yeah, the Jaguars. So, but I think the Jets are probably going to be favored in like 15 games this year. If everything were to stay true as it is right now, obviously quarterbacks can get hurt, people can get hurt, things change, people play well. Um, the only games I really think the Jets are not going to be favored in off the bat are the week one at San Fran and probably the, at Buffalo. Like if yeah. the Jaguars are playing great and Trevor Lawrence is on fire, maybe they could be favored in that game at Jacksonville. Um, the Texans are tough, but the Jets beat the shit out of them last year. And now we have Rodgers. So, and you know, they had a lot of injuries in that game too. So, but really probably 15 games the Jets are going to be favored in when the lines come out to start the season is insane. Like it's really nice. It's, it's just great to see. Uh, there's a real chance the Jets win 12 or 13 games. You know, it's not the, those years where we have to look at the schedule and be like, all right, we can convince ourselves the Jets could win nine or ten games. Like, no, the Jets should probably win twelve or thirteen games this year if everything stays true. Every single independent third party, whatever outlet puts out their best rosters in the NFL, and Jets one or two or three. And you have Rodgers. I mean, and these are Matt, these are people predicting projecting the Jets season like with Rodgers conservative numbers. You know, mm-hmm. like it's like Rodgers has 26 touchdowns and 10 picks. What if he throws for 45 touchdowns? We'll go 17 and 0. I don't know. I'm feeling really good. Who's how are people going to score on us? You have an insane pass rush. You have three great corners. You have two all pro linebackers. I don't know. I don't know what people are going to do. I, I don't know. 
I feel good, man. I feel good. Fun. And it's funny, you brought up the back half of the bye week a little tougher than the front half. But I remember in 2022 where we were like, can we just get to like five and six in the front half and we'll dominate the back half? And they yeah. just start seven and four. And then we can't, we, we lose out and we lose to Vikings, Jaguars, Lions. Like you go Seahawks, yeah. we didn't think we we're going to be good that year. So it doesn't matter. The teams are going to change. First thing that stood out to me, Mike, is we opened the first three weeks just like we did in 2018. So 2018, we had Monday night against Detroit. Then we had a Sunday game against the Dolphins. And then we had a quick turnaround in Cleveland on a shit field. And that was a disaster on Thursday night football when Baker came into the game. Sam Darnold's first three games, yeah. Three games in 11 days or 10 days, whatever the number is. uh, That stood out to me. And I don't want to do the whole win-loss thing because that's one of my favorite Mike Francesa clips ever. Is he did a win loss, which in the NFL is easy. You're 16 games in, but he did a win loss for the MLB. So like he went through like the Yankees <laughs> schedule and was doing like win. It was like 2017. It was the funniest clip. 162 ever. games of uh, like win. Jeez, uh, oh, the, way the loss. NFL is trying to expand. The, the, they're on pace to play 162 games. Yeah, and what good for the league? Vikings. Good for the UK fans. We play the Vikings in UK. Yeah. Usually, I'm like, oh, don't lose a home game. Thankfully, not a home game. For the yeah, Jets to be able to retain our uh, our eight games in eight games now, yeah, because I think our NFC like the random extra game is on the road. Yeah, the Jets play eight home games and technically nine road games, but it's really eight, 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 and one neutral site. And probably, I mean, I don't know if the Vikings have a big European following, but I know the Jets have a pretty good one. So, and the first support them. The first probable one o'clock game is Denver week four. It might be a four o'clock game, but you're thinking that's a one o'clock game. I tweeted out, hey, you're you know, we're not getting that first nine AM domestic beer uh popped at MetLife Stadium for a Sunday one o'clock game. And I would I knew I was gonna tweet it. Like ten people replied, Nine AM, you pussy, that's too late. Where's your seven forty five beer? I'm like, All right, man, nine AM is pretty early. I get it. Seven AM. All right, yeah, I'll Vikings that. in London, good for the UK fans. They earned it, dude. They haven't had a game. Well, they have 2021 against the Falcons. Was like, that was terrible. a weird game. It was your birthday. I had COVID. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think uh, Nadia came to watch that game in my in my apartment. That was nice of him. And then there was, uh, there, what was the London game? Because there was one in 2015 against Miami. 2015 Miami that just killed the Dolphins. Yep. Or uh, Revis had a pick. First play of the game, fits through a bomb um, to Marshall. And it's funny, the highlights of that game are like so grainy. I don't know why. It's like the the highlights of 2015 are different than the rest of the 2010 years. There's always like the game day, like it's like the NFL network highlights. You can see like the scores on the side. I don't know, but that was Ivory was was great that year, that game. Um, There was another, is there not another notable Jets London game? Is that it? Weird. There has to be. We're definitely missing one in between. 2022, 2020. I don't know. 2020, probably not. COVID. Players getting on a plane. I don't know. I mean, that'd be fun. It's interesting that the Jets play the Broncos and the Vikings early on because if Darnold and Zach Wilson win the job at a camp, you expect them probably to still be the starting quarterbacks by that point. That's the sweet rookie. spot for a rookie when if they start one and yeah. three, like that yeah. is that time where one of them could flip. And before that, might they have Drake May and the Patriots? Yeah. So you have three games against potential rookie quarterbacks. If if you know Bo Nix wins out, JJ McCarthy wins out, and Tennessee, it's like I get there they got better, but fuck Tennessee on the road. Like I don't care about the Titans at all. And no, these are good. These are games you want. These yeah. are games you want. I mean, it's it's the Jets gonna be heavily favored even on the road in Tennessee. We should pr- think about going to that game too. If we're gonna do any Jet road games, that'd be fun. Um, I mean, man, look at all these prime times. Like, kind of odd that you play the Steelers and the Colts on Sunday Night Football. Your two Monday Night games are Bills, which is a good one, and Niners is a great. Those are those are great games. And then the two Thursday are what? You have the Texans on Halloween and Patriots. the Patriots home opener. Yeah, home opener Thursday is annoying. But And then you have fucking Warren Sharp out here, Mike, complaining <laughs> that the Jets get like an easy break in the rookie. They have to play the rookie quarterbacks at some point. And easy they, break. They play them in the first half. Like what? 
the Warren Sharp did it last year too. That they had the longest rest schedule. Warren Sharp is a is a giant fan. That's a confirmed <laughs> historical fact. And he just whacks off the Jets getting like a break here and there. It's like, dude, we play three games in the first ten days. We have another stretch where we have three games. We don't get the bye after the London oh, yeah. game, which I guess the Jets like it's their right to have yeah, the bye there, and they didn't they want it. Mini buy. They played Monday night the next week. The, yeah. the Jets are, um, yes, the Jets are very notably uh, well taken care of by the NFL, and and everything goes their way. Get the fuck out of here! What an idiot! And Brian Costello, uh, known uh, fan of the Sandwich Gate story, <laughs> he is good for two things every year. Automatic. Number one is in a preseason game, complaining that he's still at the stadium yes. covering the team, full time job. Uh, dream job, and he's complaining about the preseason games going long. The second one is he always gets the schedule before everybody else. He always gets it, and O'Leary beat him, but say O'Leary doesn't tweet that out, Mike. Yeah. Costello broke it. He would have had it first. And what's funny is he's got to be like banging a secretary at the NFL headquarters. Like, How does he know the schedule every year that early? There's something. He has, he has an how, did how the fuck did O'Leary know? I want to ask him. We tried to have him on. Yeah, yeah. we would have pressed him. Damn, that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, listen, that's a real source. Yeah, and the other Warren Sharp thing was, he was like, oh, at the end of the year, they have, uh," he said something, I got to find it. He made a point that the Jets had like, when they play the divisional opponents, they have like an extra day, which I don't think is true. He said from October 5th through November 12th, they're not leaving home. But hey, Warren Sharp, they're not they're coming London. home until a Thursday game, and they're going to London. They're playing in another continent. Yeah. What? Rest edges in four late-season divisional games. So we're penalized because the Patriots have a Monday night game like right before we play them. Like Warren Sharp, come back to us right now. You're an idiot. Like the, One of the lowest IQ members in all of media include politics include sports he, he's got to be better like i need more out of warren sharp here and speaking of low iq guys like what are these this ralph vacchiano guy all these people that hate aaron Rodgers. i just i just want like i just don't get it you know the people are fired up like these are grown men and ralph vacchiano who covers the giants tweeted out there has been quite a battle going on the last few days between aaron Rodgers and harrison bucker for title of worst person in the nfl we have people committing legitimate crimes and beating their wives and driving 120 miles per hour and abandoning their vehicles and doing insane shit and killing people. And Aaron Rodgers, who went on a Tucker Carlson show, and Harrison Bucker, who gave a commencement speech, are the worst people in the sport. I just don't get it, man. I truly don't get it. I'm going to find how many, how many times Ralph has tweeted about Aaron Hernandez, and I'm going to do like <laughs> one. And then Aaron Rodgers, 40. <laughs> is this a, a live master of receipts? Uh, I could pull it up quickly here, but the, the Bucker <laughs> thing was... In the, action, the, yeah. The Bucker thing is hilarious because the Busting with the Boys, Will Compton and Taylor's podcast, they took a two-minute clip from the video and they were like, what a speech. And like their producer posted it. And the, that two-minute clip was, you know, men, it's not a, wrong to be a part of the family, be home. And you're like, oh, I agree with that. And like the other 18 minutes is ridiculous shit, like really dumb stuff. Again, it's his like religion and what, again, I disagree with all of that part of it, uh, but blown at it, like really people are mad about it. And the Rogers thing, I, when he was on Rogan, I had a tweet. I watched Aaron Rodgers on Joe Rogan. So you didn't have to Here are the key takeaways. I said, he talked about the jets twice and both times were about jets that are like flying against like UFO planes, like nothing <laughs> about the New York jets. So I watched like an hour, I think, of the Tucker video. And there's parts of it where he's like, I just want everybody to love each other. And if people attack my character, I'm fine with bringing them back in my life and fixing it. And like a lot of really like good points. And then he goes on and like Putin's like really fucking smart. And he starts and like, all right, just bring, come back. All right. Like chill out. Like not a good guy. <laughs> Let's be normal. But yeah, whatever he said in that podcast was not to the level of he's the worst man in the NFL. Like, what like, is that? What is that? How do you have that opinion? Let's I don't time get it. About Aaron Hernandez. I'm excited. 
Dude, that Tom Brady roast was kind of crazy too. Speaking of Aaron Hernandez, I don't know if you, you caught any of that. Where just his ex teammates are just making fun of the dude. You know, it was a little bit intense. He's tweeted a couple times about what did he say, like bad things, or he's like, he's like, he's nice like catch Aaron Hernandez. Uh, Aaron Hernandez trial kicks off. Uh, murder <laughs> trial kicks out like nothing. <laughs> no opinionated. That's not a problem. You can kill four people, but if you talk about, if you do an interview, then you are the worst man in the sport. I gotta find a way to phrase that quote tweet because I give you, I just <laughs> like blatantly like zero tweets about Aaron Hernandez. Uh, four hundred eighty tweets about Aaron Rodgers going on podcast. It's insane. Maybe I'll do that. Well, whatever. The Jets are going to... Rodgers is going to shock the world this year. What do you think, Matt? Uh, schedule, I mean, record prediction for the Jets. Legit. Like, real record prediction after looking at the schedule. If you took a gun, put it to my head, I think the Jets this year are going to finish 11-6. and six. Sure. And I, I, I deep down believe that. And I think their margin of error... Is three both ways, three both ways. If everything burns and flames, I think they're still going to win eight games with their schedule. If yeah. everything hits perfect, why not a fourteen three year? Eleven is the spot where I'm like, I kind of want eleven. Yeah, you know what's crazy, Matt? It really, I think the, I think eight, like eight, is a real floor, especially since you won seven last year. Yep, and like everything really did go wrong. And you got better. They could win 15 games. Like, seriously, this team could win 15 games. I just don't know how teams, if everything goes literally right, like no no major injuries to anybody, you know? You, you know it's why it, 15, I don't think it's possible? And it's just like, a lot of games. Yeah. It's it just, I don't trust the coaching staff. The coaching no, I, staff has proven yeah. nothing to me. Nothing. And it's funny, Jeff Ulberg, again, go back to 2021 on the timeline. People, wanted, people were afraid LaFleur was going to get a head coaching job and that Olberg needed to be fired. Yeah. And Olberg was enemy number one. And what will mask that hate is producing on the field. And Olberg flipped it around and built a top five defense with, with you know, Robert Sala's fingerprints are all over that. Yeah. And I just, what Sala did in terms of the rhetoric off the field, the no energy on the sideline, and just... The timeouts, the challenges, the in-game, like nothing he did last year made me optimistic. And he has not proven to me that he could go and win against a Kyle Shanahan. Uh, can he beat a terrorist sympathizer in Sean McDermott? Yes. But I don't know if he can beat the top five coaches in the NFL right now. Sean McDermott loves terrorism. The... Um... Yeah, I don't know. It just, if you, if you look on paper, you know, obviously the defense is great. It's the same defense as last year. You had Reddick, you lose Huff. You had some other guys. Um, Get better at safety. Yeah, Chuck Clark. And you keep Ashton and, and Tony Adams. Yep. The I, I still think there's a move to be made also. I don't know why the Jets would have moved JFM if there was not some other move to be made. I feel like the, the beat writers always give the answer of like, Got to sign the rookies. I don't. I don't know. They signed all the rookies. I don't. I have no idea how much cap space the Jets have right now. It's very confusing. But it seems like there's a move to be made. Maybe they'll upgrade safety again. Um, but Matt, there's really a chance. There is a legitimate chance that Aaron Rodgers wins the MVP this year. There is a chance he won two of the last four in the NFL with the same offensive coordinator, and now he has better skill position players and a really good offensive line and the Jets have a top five defense they could win 16 games I don't even know they could win every they're gonna be favored in 15 of these games we look down the schedule 15 games I think they're gonna be like when the odds come out 15 games they're favored in I don't think it's gonna be 15 I don't think they're gonna win 15 oh like favored I think they won't be favored in Miami okay that's fair ah I don't know the yeah. Dolphins look pretty thin. Yeah, but I'm glad that we're back. We have a lot of big stuff coming. We've hit oh, the 20 minute mark. Yeah. I do have to run, Mike. But here, dude. big things okay, coming. Here. Any parting words before we wrap up? 
we have a couple we have some really good things planned we have a, we have some fun games that we're gonna play we have some good guests that are slated to come on do some fun stuff the jets are gonna win 17 games did i feel great this is like this is the easiest schedule in years in terms of it's opponents. Funny. We knew who we were playing. Like yeah. we know who we're playing outside like two games every year in the future. And we <laughs> knew who we were been playing since week eighteen of last year. And I still reading it. I'm like, oh, this is like easy. Like But easy also money. also the off season is over, basically. So you know who's on these teams. You know? Yeah, if Kirk Cousins stayed in the Vikings, that game looks different. That's the thing. That's the other yeah. thing of it. Because it's funny, we always think about that. We're like, we know the algorithm of making the schedule. It's not like baseball. Um, man, dude, come on, four, yeah. thirteen and four. Love it. Oh, All right, I'm, buddy, take, I'm taking every over. Get out of here. <laughs> take every over. I'll talk Shut to you, soon, buddy. Don't forget, if you made it this far, always DM us. We'll follow you back. Uh, Do it. Love having you in the program. Follow you the Discord. Subscribe, like, Mike. Talk to you later, buddy. Shut up.